Coming up on the news today, we've got a roundup from the National Cyclocross Championships, which took place at the weekend, the Australian and New Zealand Road Race Championships, a look at Trek Factory Racing's brand new kit for 2014, and this year's Welter A Spania route. We've also got a glimpse of a prototype SRAM Cyclocross group set, Strava Club, Facebook competition winner, and of course, we'll finish with Tweets of the Week. Cyclocross National Championships took place throughout Europe and the US over the weekend and there will be some familiar names wearing their national colours for the next 12 months. Sven Nace took his ninth Belgian title but will of course continue to wear the rainbow stripes of world champion for at least the next couple of weeks. Lars van der Haar continued his amazing season by retaining the Dutch title with Mariana Vos winning the women's event quite comfortably. And there were a number of other riders who successfully defended their titles, including Ian Field in Great Britain, Francie Marie in France, plus Philip Valsaben and Hanke Kupfernagel over in Germany. Jeremy Powers took his second national title over in the US, and it wasn't a surprise to see Katie Compton retain her Stars and Stripes jersey. Helen Wyman turned the tables though in Great Britain by beating defending champion Nikki Harris, who finished in second place. Meanwhile, in the Southern Hemisphere, the first road national champions of 2014 have been crowned. Super talent Caleb Ewan took wins in both the men's under-23 criterium and road race, whilst in the women's elite race it was Gracie Elvin of Orica who took the victory. There was a slight upset in the men's elite time trial, with Michael Hepburn edging out defending champion Luke Durbridge by 11 seconds. And with Damien Housen getting the bronze medal on the day, it was a clean sweep of the podium places for the Orica team. The elite men's road race came to an exciting conclusion in Ballarat on Sunday. An elite group of four contested the finish and it was Simon Gerrans who crowned a fantastic week for the Orica team by outsprinting Cadel Evans who finished in second. Richie Port of Team Sky rounded out the podium in third place. And over in New Zealand it was again World Tour riders who dominated proceedings. Hayden Ralston riding for Trek took his fourth national title after outsprinting Jack Bauer of Garmin Sharp. However, in third place, it was a triathlete in the form of Tom Davison. After a long breakaway, Ralston averaged an incredible 306 watts for the four and a half hour event. And in the women's race, it was Rushley Buchanan who took the win. It would have been almost impossible to top the 2013 welter in terms of intensity and the riders will be somewhat relieved to see that there are a mere 8 summit finishes at this year's race compared with the 12 that they faced last year. Starting in Jerez on the 23rd of August with a 12.6km team time trial, we'll see the riders battle the blistering heat of Andalusia in the first week before heading northeast via Baeta and Albatheta. The first transfer takes them to northern Spain taking in notorious climbs such as the Lagos de Covadonga and the penultimate data centre of Puerto de Ancales before breaking tradition with an individual time trial into Santiago de Compostela on the 14th of September. This year will be the first year since 1993 that the race has finished outside of Madrid. What do you think of the route? You can let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Trek Factory Racing revealed their brand new kit for 2014 at their team presentation which took place in Belgium last week. The jersey and shorts are predominantly black with one white sleeve and some fairly understated logos. Whilst of course not being up to the standard of our GCN kit, we do think theirs looks quite smart. However you might disagree, and if you do, let us know your comments below. Team Argos Shimano is no longer, but don't panic because Taiwanese bike manufacturer Giant have stepped up as title sponsor, a position they were committed to for the next four years. The jersey will feature the colours of Giant, which is black, blue and white, and they'll be known as Giant Shimano. Marcel Cattell will be amongst the riders to don the brand new jersey at the upcoming Tour Down Under, which starts on the 19th of January. On to our GCN Strava Club, and as we record this, we're just a couple of people short of 3,000 members, so thank you all for joining. There's some familiar names at the top of the leaderboard in the most distance ridden over the last seven days. Durian Ryder tops that with just over 1,500 kilometres, with Cycle Doctor 1 now in second place with just under 1,300. Longest ride goes to Mario Fonseca with 352.8 kilometres, whilst the most amount of climbing goes to Domenica Brogi with over 35,000 metres. Strava Member of the Week this time goes to somebody who was suggested to us by a viewer of last week's new show, and that is young Kyle Nankeevil of Australia. Apparently he gets up as early as 3am to do the 60km into work and regularly gets in more than 400 ks a week. That definitely deserves a GCN water bottle, so get in touch with your address Kyle and we'll send you one through. US website Velo News got some exclusive pictures of Ryan Trebon's bike at the weekend, complete with a prototype SRAM cyclocross group set. It features a single front chainring combined with an 11-speed cassette at the rear. 
If you'd like to see more pictures of the group set and some more details, head over to Velo News website and look for the tech section. On to our Facebook competition. Last week, we asked you to tell us about your ridiculous resolutions. Anything that you promised yourself you would keep to on January the 1st and have utterly failed. Well, we've got a couple of special mentions and the first of those goes to David Hawkins. He said, I resolved to clean my bike after every wet ride. I failed six times to do this. I've been suitably chastised by my local bike shop. William de Aff promised himself to cap his espresso and drip coffee daily intake. Back to two espressos at 6.30 before his training ride with the club and two double espressos after the ride in the cafe then numerous mugs of fresh drip while at my desk. All black, no sugar of course. But the winner is Alan Kay. He promised to like every post and win a GCN water bottle. I'm giving up after liking this one. I'll make my own with Tipex. No need now, we'll send you one in the post. We've got plenty more videos on the channel coming up this week. Already on Monday, we released the latest of our roadside maintenance videos, showing you what to do if you get a cut in your tire out training. On Wednesday, we've got another turbo training video, showing you some tips on how to set them up. And then on Thursday, we'll give you our top 10 rides to look out for at the upcoming Tour Down Under. On Friday, we look at some of the new kits from the World Tour teams of 2014. And then on Saturday, we've got a new spin class video for you to train along to. We've got a selection of tweets of the week this time with a common theme running amongst riders who are arriving in Australia for the Tour Down Under. Andre Greipel, Rafa Vals, Rory Sutherland and Frank Schleck all posted pictures showing temperatures, either current or forecast. Jussi Vaikonen and Ben Hermans posted pictures of the heat. And finally, Jens Vogt posted a picture of beans on toast. That's all we've got time for this week. Join us again at the same time next week where we'll be bringing you this new show directly from Australia. See you then. Hi, I'm Paul and welcome to my GCN indoor cycling session. I will take you on a 35 minute cycling journey with a variety of intervals along the way. We will track our progression with a 